Hello, everyone. Thanks for attending. Um, my name is uh, George. I'm a principal software engineer at Collabora. I've been working on multimedia um, things for the past decade. Um, I've been working on GStreamer. Um, and the last four or five years, I've been working on Pipewire. And specifically, I've um, implemented, um, I've architected and implemented the Wire Plumber um, Session Manager, which uh, works together with Pipewire. I'll tell you about that a bit later. So <clears throat> let's talk about cameras, shall we? <laughs> cameras are really fascinating devices. They have some mechanism, captures light, and takes that into a sensor and transforms it into a digital picture. Amazing. How does that work, actually? <clears throat> so on the hardware level, there's a bunch of stuff. There is a lens that takes light in. It directs it into a sensor behind the scenes. And then this sensor generates electrical signals. They go to a, a digital converter. They get converted. They pass through some processing to reconstruct the picture. Um, the picture is then compressed, and finally it gets um, to the CPU, to the host system, where uh, we, we in uh, as software developers uh, working on, on that part of the stack, we get a picture to, uh, to work with it. <coughs> now, I know this is all very simplistic. Uh, description, I'm not a camera architect. I'm, uh, I'm working on the software stack, on the... CPU side, so on the green box over there. Now, <clears throat> this is um, a traditional form of a camera. However, in the recent years, we've started doing cameras which look more like this. So there is no, no longer just one sensor. We have three, four, five, six different sensors over there, um, different lenses, different sensor properties. And what happens is <clears throat> all these have their own pipeline, processing pipeline. And somewhere down the road, these images need to be combined. They need to, we need to reconstruct the final uh, view of, of the real world, um, which is being measured by different sensors and different lenses. Um, and then we want to provide something to the user space um, <coughs> which can be different depending on the use case. So it's uh, really, do you want to capture a photograph or do you want to capture a video or do you, you want to capture a, just a preview for the screen? These are very different use cases. And every time you ask for one of those, the, the camera actually needs to be configured differently. Um, <clears throat> now, as I said, all these sensors capture different things, and there, to combine them, there are some high computational requirements. We, we need to run some algorithms. Um, these algorithms may be running on a dedicated processor or on the host CPU to save some um, cost, maybe. Um, there is a blurry boundary between those, right? There is, um, depending on the, on the camera, on the vendor, people do different things. And nowadays we also started seeing also AI processing, um, which I suspect it, it's combined somewhere in there. I haven't really um, looked it up yet. It's, it's new development. <coughs> so. Basically, all these images from all these different sensors, they go back and forth in a processing pipeline. There are different blocks that process that do different things. Um, so they come from the sensor, they go to the uh, integrated signal processor, they go to the CPU, they get combined, they go back to the signal processor, back and forth all the time. And to, um, to orchestrate that, we basically need some kind of software that manages all of that. And that software on Linux um, is LibCamera. 
So look, Leap Camera provides all of that. It manages all the devices that are available on the system, all the sensors of every device. Um, it builds all these processing pipelines. Um, it has the ability to run uh, algorithms um, and also proprietary algorithms in a sandboxed environment. It has um, all the device um, agnostic device specific components, which may be provided by a vendor um, as well. And it provides an abstract API to the user space. So the user space can then go and ask Clip Camera, please give me um, a video stream or a stream to take a photograph or something like that. Um, <clears throat> Well, that's very nice. I, um, I am not an expert on Leap Camera myself. Um, if you want, if you have questions about that, or if you want to learn more about Leap Camera, there's a talk tomorrow by Kiran, um, who is one of the authors, and uh, you can watch that and ask him questions. Now, <clears throat> the point I'm trying to make while telling you all of that is, okay, we have cameras with multiple sensors that we somehow manage a pipeline that transforms all these images that are captured into a final um, stream. But what if we have multiple devices, um, which are totally separate devices in separate places of the system? Um, think of a Think of a car, for example, which might have cameras in various places uh, all over around. And also, <clears throat> another thing is, can we, uh, while we combine things from different devices, can we uh, separate the processing into smaller blocks? Because as you accumulate things in one big block, you could write an application that you know, opens all devices, captures data, and then does some processing. But as um, this complexity accumulates in one place, it, it gets really hard to maintain, gets really hard to develop. Um, and so an idea is to split all these things into separate blocks and make them separate processes. And even better, um, separate them in, in, in different containers so that you have also secured blocks that do a small part of the processing. Um, and I think we really need that as complexity increases, we need to have this kind of division of work and also the versatility, the ability to change these components um, while keeping the rest intact uh, I think it's more, much more maintainable in the long run. And on that topic comes Pipewire. So Pipewire is um, basically a multimedia bus. You can think of it as a multimedia bus. It allows any form of media, be it uh, video, be it audio, to be uh, transported from one place in your system to another. It can come from a device, and it can go to process A, then go to process B, then go to another device, um, back and forth uh, around the system. And it, um, so <clears throat> by, by providing this feature, uh, um, it allows you basically to build a, a processing graph which is split across processes in your system. While at the same time, these processes get to share the resources, so the, all the memory that is being used for transporting the buffers uh, is um, shared, it's reused. Um, there is support also for DMA buff, for hardware buffers. Um, all this is done with very low latency. Um, there, is no, um, there is no big overhead for transporting this around the system. Uh, and also Pipeguard itself has very low resource co consumption. It, it um, doesn't take much memory or CPU to do that. 
And obviously, by allowing you to build a graph, a processing graph with blocks, just like Leap Camera, it also needs um, something that will manage all this graph. It will put all the blocks in, in their place and connect them together and allow media to flow from one place to the other. And that is um, what Wireplumber does, the um, project that I'm working on. It's, um, it's a scriptable component that um, allows you to you know, discover all the nodes that are, exist in the system, all the devices, all the applications that have opened, and uh, as soon as it discovers them, it connects them together based on some logic that um, you can define in the configuration. In a picture, it looks like this, let's say. So you can see how, for example, media can be coming from the hardware. I have two hardware cameras over there in, the, in this picture. Um, they go through Lip Camera. Now, Lip Camera has its own internal uh, pipeline handler, um, processing algorithms, device agnostic code, and all of that. It's contained in the library. And then there is Pipewire, which is um, a daemon. It uses Lip Camera to open these devices, so it provides um, nodes, processing nodes, that represent these devices. And it allows you to link them to any other node. So you see that on top we have some applications, some processes, which for the sake of demonstration here, I have also put them to be in separate containers. They can be, they don't have to be. Um, it's, it's your call in your application design. Um, some examples I have put there is a network camera receiver, so something that receives an RTP stream from somewhere else uh, and provides it as a local device. It appears as if it was a local device, right? It's a, just another node, just like the other ones. Um, you could have some processing software that has input and output and connects to a device, takes some input, makes some processing, and then sends it to another node. So um, then you can have a, a, a GUI viewer, for example, um, that takes these images, combines them somehow, and gives you a, a preview on the screen, or maybe um, a recorder application, which uh, its, its entire um, uh, task is just to encode and, and store to the file system. And talking about encoding, one more thing that um, is not really there yet, it's not into Pipewire, but it's something that I've been thinking about and it maybe is a good idea to start looking into it um, in the future, is to allow hardware, other hardware resources like hardware encoders and hardware decoders to be also represented as nodes into Pipewire. So, <coughs> Then you could have a, a processing block that looks like this, where you have input go coming from a camera. The buffers are transported through pipe wire to a hardware encoder that will encode and give you the encoded stream so that the camera recorder application really doesn't have to access the hardware encoder directly. Um, it will just receive a stream with um, the encoded data. Now, again, this is not something that exists, but I'm, 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 I want to look into that. It's something uh, interesting. Um, and the same thing would work for the decoder. Uh, so think about, um, for example, I know Android uses a similar architecture where uh, if you want to play something, it goes into a basically a different process where it gets decoded and displayed. Um, and this is something that Pipewire could also do and enable for mobile devices and other kinds of devices. So this can have many applications. Um, think of automotive, um, where you have a lot of cameras around the car, sensors, um, 
possibly doing some processing. Um, also think about cloud processing applications. There are streams coming in from user devices that are gathered in a data center where you have lots and lots and lots of Docker containers. Um, and you need to, to get all this, in, all this data through a pipeline of containerized applications uh, until they reach their final destination. Um, mobile devices like phones, tablets, TV sets, um, uh, cameras, whatever, you name it, many, many more applications. I think there, there, are, there is a lot of potential um, for applications to use this kind of architecture um, to be able to, as I said before, to uh, separate the work um, inside the system and, and make components which are more flexible, more versatile. Of course, let's not forget audio. I've been talking about video based on, on camera input, but uh, Pipewire is uh, also used for audio. It can transport audio. It's now the default audio daemon on the Linux desktop, um, replacing the previous daemons that were there, Pulse Audio and Jack. And it is also, um, it's also been deployed on some devices like the Steam Deck, for example. It has a very nice Bluetooth audio infrastructure, so uh, much better than, than what was there in Pulse Audio. Um, works really well. And all these complex audio graphs are actually made possible through Pipewire in, in the desktop right now. And we are seeing more and more people interested to apply this to their products, their devices. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> now all of that is best described with a demo. So I'll attempt to show you something so, in order to, um, to demonstrate, what I, what I want to demonstrate here is um, capturing something from, um, don't look at the script yet, capturing something from um, a camera and then taking it through a filter and then taking it to an application which does the rendering, being three separate processes. Now, every process that I'm going to launch is going to be uh, a GStreamer pipeline. So I'm using GStreamer and GST Launch uh, as a tool to help me build the uh, individual applications. Obviously, uh, I should mention that Pipewire is not meant to be a replacement for GStreamer. GStreamer is still um, a, a great tool to build um, applications, uh, to build these, these small blocks. Um, <clears throat> so, here I have a script which uh, runs um, GST launch and, and basically receives input from Pipewire. It, has, it launches the Pipewire source element. Uh, it takes it through some processing. Um, what the, the main processing element here is the face detect, so it's going to detect uh, my face when it goes uh, when it appears in the, in the camera. And then it goes out again back to Pipewire through Pipewire Sync. And then I have another script which is going to just receive a stream from Pipewire and render it to a window. So let's, let's launch that, let's see. <coughs> um. So, that's the face detection application, right? It doesn't have any graphical output, obviously. It's just taking pictures from Pipewire and puts them back into Pipewire. Um, and that's the output window. So that's the, um, that's the script that receives something from Pipewire and uh, renders it. It's not very nice. Why? I don't know. <laughs> obviously, uh, nothing is perfect. I think it's, uh, it's a bit confused because this is an X, XV image sync, an X window. Um, and it's a bit confused with the projector or something like that. 
Um, so how do we know what is going on? There is this tool which was showing up before on my screen, which can show you the graph right now, what's going on in Pipewire, right? So I have my built-in front camera, which is, um, this is a node that uses libcamera to open my, my camera right now. I have also the plugin that uses video for Linux here, so it's also available, but I'm not using it. I'm using the libcamera one. It goes into face detect and then goes out and goes to the output window. That's one part. Now, <coughs> we're talking about cameras and camera input, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a camera, right? We could also do playback. So here I have another um, process which basically plays a file and it just, instead of rendering it to the screen, it renders it to pipe wire. So there's a node being created and that gives me the video stream as it, be, as, it, as it is being played out. And then I have another script which is very, very similar to the previous one. It's just something that plays, uh, something that displays the output. <coughs> so, video source playing and video output. It's going to show up. Yeah, this is the movie. Mute it. So, again, I have separation. I have the, uh, render, the, the, the decoding process which plays back and the process that renders it are different things. Um, obviously, the interesting thing that I can do here is I can launch multiple renderers that show the same thing. So, if I have this, like up here, let me resize it. Go to another terminal window, I can just launch this, the same script and it plays the same output, synchronized, since it's being streamed by the other process. Right. <clears throat> so what do we have here? We have, um, obviously there is some audio being played in the background. Um, and we have this process, which is the video decoder and player and two consumers um, which render it. Come on. Um, and in a similar fashion, um, we can like combine these things so I can launch face detect and the video source and then combine them. Let's see how that looks. Uh, yeah, video source, then face detect, and then combine. So I could like combine them. Now there is a third process there which does this compositing. So it displays a window and runs the compositor element which um, renders this picture in picture. <coughs> And obviously I can start more of these, like, oh. And they will render the same thing. And the pipeline now looks like this. That's a bit more complicated. <laughs> Uh, like I have, um, yeah, where is the other, or oh, here. Let the audio be down. So yeah, front camera going to face detect, then it goes to the two renderers, um, the picture in picture inputs from the two separate uh, processes. And the other one, the GST launch here is the video player. And again, the two um, renderers, background inputs for the two different windows that I have. And obviously I can split this more because now I have two processes, two, two um, windows here, like that one and that one, which basically both 
composite, composite, composite the images uh, into the window. Um, I could also run a separate compositor like that composites and then it provides an output to Pipewire so that these two um, windows would just render without compositing. So let's see how that would look like. Uh, I could run this composite sh. Yeah, so that's another background application now that takes inputs from these and it has an output not connected yet. And then I can run this composite output which renders the result um, like. and now I can I can go ahead and launch more of these so there's another window and now these two windows are not doing the compositing themselves. It's being done by a single process here. So there is a shared um, shared workload. It's, it's composited once and then rendered twice. And what about CPU? Let's see. Uh, that won't be good. <laughs> so it doesn't look good for GStreamer. GStreamer is really, really, really taking a lot of CPU here, doing all this um, decoding and also the, I think the one with the highest CPU is the compositor, which um, does the picture-in-picture -picture thing, uh, since it uh, does it all on CPU and, uh, and the video is, is huge, it's full HD. <coughs> but how about Pipewire? Um, I, I, think, I think I can... <clears throat> so how about Pipewire? Pipewire is using 0.08% of my CPU, so it's literally nothing for what it's doing. Um, and only 50 megabytes of, of RAM, I mean, that's... Um, that's nothing for what it's doing. And wire plumber, again, wire plumber is idle. It connects the, th the graph when, it, when the process appear, but then it's, it's idle, it doesn't do anything else. <coughs> so yeah. That's, um, that's it, let me stop all of these. Oh. Come on, <laughs> I can start it from here. Um, so, next steps. I think that's, uh, that's your call, mainly. Um, on my side and, and my team's side and on Pipewire upstream in general, what we do is we um, develop these mechanisms, these tools um, for them to be there, for them to, to be available so that you can build uh, great applications on top of them. Um, I am not developing an application, so I'm, not, I'm developing the session manager and um, the two streamer bits around it and, and all of that stuff, um, bug fixing, pipe wire and, and so on. Um, but there are great applications that could be built um, on top of this architecture and um, it really provides, I think it, it makes some things really simple to, to solve some complex problems. They become really simple when you have the ability to transport, transport media from one process to the other and um, share devices, uh, access devices from multiple processes um, and so on. So yeah, um, that's it. Thank you very much for attending and I'm open to questions. Yes.
something which I will have no answer to because it's not strictly a camera program, is five wire and wire sound at the right and the right right level, so it's like something like that. And if that's the case, what would you need from, from a camera to implement video and how do you relate it? Right, so the question is, um, what can PipeWire do basically to, um, to provide synchronization between audio and video that's being captured? Is that yeah. Yeah, the, basically it? Yeah. Um, so PipeWire doesn't do um, much for synchronization itself. Um, it is mainly a transport mechanism, but um, everything that goes through PipeWire is basically being transported as a live stream. So if you're capturing something from a, cap from a camera, it's being transported live. Um, there is a bit of a latency always when you process something, but um, the good thing with PipeWire is that this latency is fixed. So you know beforehand how much time a frame takes to go from uh, point A to point B. Um, so, in the, eventually, what you can do to, to, to synchronize is, in your application, eventually, um, gather all these frames and knowing the latency that the pipeline has, um, apply the necessary um, clock synchronization to, to synchronize those. Um, obviously, you can get timestamps from, from, from the source, so timestamps can be transported, they can be applied and transported to, uh, to the application, but other than that, yeah, PipeWire doesn't really synchronize things, it doesn't have, um, it has a clock, but it, it's not for synchronizing audio and video or two videos together, it's the clock is mainly to, to give the pace at which frames go from one point to another point. Um, knowing the frame rate, it will just, you know, go every once in a while and move one more frame from the source to the uh, consumer. Um, other question? Yes? Right. So the question is, um, are buffers provided by Pipewire itself, or is it something that the producer and consumer need to allocate and negotiate and so on? Um, the answer is, uh, yes, they are provided by Pipewire. So as soon as you start a stream, Pipewire um, allocates a set of buffers for your stream. It is a fixed amount of buffers. It doesn't change so that the latency is also fixed. And you can obviously um, influence that from the application if you want different set of buffers, different latency, or if you want to, um, to do um, DMA buff sharing, for example, you can also request that. Uh, you can provide, you could get buffers which don't really have a buffer, but then you could attach the file descriptor on them since they are DMA buff based. Um, but it's always a set of fixed <coughs> amount of buffers, which are always shared between the uh, between two nodes which are linked together. Um, okay, I have three hands. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Right, so um, the question is, um, while Pipewire basically does zero copy, transferring buffer from one node to another, how does that work when you have multiple consumers where both need to get access to the same buffer eventually? Um, the answer is um, they, they get the same buffer, they get access to the same um, piece of memory 
in a read-only fashion because they, uh, if, if they want to process it, then they have to copy it somewhere else. But um, since they, uh, when they are receiving something, they are receiving it for reading, right? So they, uh, they, can, they can then copy it somewhere else if they need to. Um, the question is, if one consumer stalls, do the others have to wait? Is it uh, no? The answer is no. They don't have to wait. Um, there is no. Um, I mean, the locking mechanism is implemented in the daemon in the in the server. Um, you, the server. The daemon. I, I'm talking to the daemon as a server. Um, the daemon basically um, assigns these buffers to these processes and gives them a time slot, which is called a quantum. Um, so they have this much time to actually get the data. Um, if they don't get it, it's their fault. They, get, um, they don't get access to the buffer anymore. The buffer is returned back to the pool. Um, and yeah, such is life. <laughs> so you need to, to, to tune these things. Uh, it's not, uh, it can go wrong. If you try to have very low latency and give very small amount of time to processes, it can go wrong. It can, you can have bad results. It needs to be tuned if you have these kind of things. Um, yes, next question. Um, how will format negotiation be handled? Like if, if I've got a camera uh, six four plus or eight, I saw your script has hard coded text. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, so the question is, how does format negotiation work? Because my script cheated a little bit and had the caps hard-coded. And the answer is, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> it's something that is uh, actively developed. Um, I mean, there is some basic format negotiation. There are some, some of the scripts that I showed did not have caps hard-coded. So basically, they get the caps of the producer, whatever this is. Um, but the camera currently is being started with its best possible resolution and frame rate. It, uh, we cannot request something else from Pipewire, so that mechanism is not there yet. We are, we are thinking about it, how exactly it's, it's going to be. Um, so, yeah. And, and the card-coded caps that I had was, were basically for ensuring that this process connects to the camera and not to, let's say, an audio source, because um, there was no, nothing else that would um, ensure that. And because Pipewire Source and Pipewire Sync in streamer, they can do both audio and video. Um, there was, yes? Yeah, so the question is, how do we, <coughs> how can we manage more complex pipelines? How do we program um, <coughs> things to be linked together? Um, and the answer is um, that you can do that through Wire Plumber and its uh, scriptable configuration, which I did not show here. What I did was that I, um, in every Pipewire source that I launched, I was passing a property called node.target, which specifies the target node that I want to link to. Um, and this property acts as a hint to WirePlumber. So then WirePlumber takes that and says, OK, do I have a node with this name? And it looks up the graph. And if it finds a node with that name, then it makes a link. Um, but it's a hint. It doesn't have to be that way. Wire Plumber can act differently if necessary. And there are scripts that can do this kind of linking. Um, source scripts. Um, they are written in Lua. And currently, they are pretty complex. But it's, it's there. 
Um, there is a bunch of logic here written in Lua where that can do all this routing. It can discover nodes, they can take their properties and you know, see if they can be linked or not and blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Um, I'm out of time, so thank you very much for attending, and um, if there is anything else, you can catch me later and talk to me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.